men with Dr. Hak Jahan Fu and worked alongside her and her late husband, the Reverend Sam Young Fu, for many years. I can testify that she is anointed, appointed, and approved by the Lord to gather together the people who will bring the world into a new age of peace. There is no other human being who is working harder and sacrificing more to unify the divided nations of North and South Korea and to overcome hatred between peoples than Dr. Wu. She is the founder of the World Christian Leadership Conference and the Rally of Hope, as well as the prestigious Sun Hak Peace Prize, given to those who most thoroughly embody the ideal of living for the sake of others. Let us receive with great joy in our hearts and a tumultuous applause, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, the true mother of peace. As we celebrate WCLC's first anniversary with members of the clergy from around the world and members of the American clergy with ACLC, I give my heartfelt greetings. Today, we must know the truth of God's dispensation and providence and usher in a new era. This is the point where we are standing. Just as the Bible says, new wine must be put into new wineskins. Today, throughout the world, Problems so severe as to defy description are arising, most notably as the coronavirus continues to spread all over the world. We face a situation where face-to-face -face communications are severely restricted. Even so, God's hope and humanity's hope is to see a unified world. And so, this is why it is about the truth of God's providence that I would like to speak. I have called upon you to become the righteous people of this, of this time. Our Creator wanted to realize His dream together with humankind on Earth. For this reason, He gave human beings a responsibility for their life. His desire for was for us to grow our hearts well and perfect our love, then live together with Him, our Creator. However, those in the position of becoming the first ancestors, Adam and Eve, were unable to accomplish this. And they ended up bringing about a world that had no relationship with God. Our Creator is eternal. 
everything he created is also eternal. Looking from this perspective, God had no other way than to carry out the providence of salvation which he would have wished were not necessary. We know how difficult that history has been. The 4,000 year history of the people of Israel being one example. In keeping with those times, God sent his central figures and prophets and promised to send the Messiah. But how difficult this course must have been that it took God 4,000 years. Consider the time when the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt and how through Moses they gained their freedom. God enabled the Israelites to escape, guiding them with the miracles of the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. The place the Israelites had to reach was Canaan. Then why did they waste 40 years in the wilderness. This was the, the result of their not being able to be completely united with their leader, Moses. In other words, the Israelites lacked a sense of ownership of their position, their, their mission. Finally, however, after 4,000 years, through the people of Israel, God sent the Savior and the Messiah. He called Jesus, my son, my only begotten son. Why did God send his son to us? At that time, certain central people had key responsibilities. Among them, Mother Mary and the religious leaders of that time. Yet they were unable to complete those responsibilities. And Jesus, as a result, had no footing on which to stand. Jesus Christ had no choice but to go the way of the cross. However, he promised to return. Jesus said he would come again to conduct the marriage supper of the Lamb. Christianity had its first beginnings as the early followers waited for the second advent of Jesus, who had promised to come back. However, they did not know the true essence of Jesus, nor did they fully understand about our Creator's ideal for humankind. Through the apostles, Christianity began, but over a long period of time, in the course of the faith, a man-made framework system of faith came to be emphasized. And many problems emerged from this. God emphasized that it would be based on the Christian foundation 
that the Messiah would come again. Heaven therefore allowed the Reformation to occur. Martin Luther began the Reformation. And John Calvin gave it solidity. Luther in publishing his 95 theses and they're reaching Rome through them Luther spoke about the oppression of people's faith the Protestant church began from this point back then the Puritans in Europe were longing for the freedom to serve God and practice their faith freely. This led them to seek out and head for the new world where they could finally find that freedom of faith. In 1620, they journeyed to what is now America. And the first thing they did was build a chapel where they could worship God. Then, for the education of future generations, they built a school. Only after this did they build their own homes. This is to say, that building a nation that served God was something they had resolved to do. This was the beginning of the United States. This is why even on United States money, on the coins and bills, we see the statement in God we trust. However, throughout this 400 year history, America has weathered a lot of storms. With the formation of the Northern Presbyterian movement in connection with Canada, pastors, deacons, and believers of the Presbyterian Church movement more freely than under the Catholic Church they could attend God more freely than they could un in the earlier times under the Catholic Church. Therefore, many pastors began going out to the world. During that time in Korea, the Presbyterian Church in Pyongyang saw explosive growth under God's providence. At that time, Christianity stood in the position to see the fulfillment of the providence that God had promised. Jesus Christ, whom all humanity was waiting for, had said that he would come again and conduct the marriage supper of the Lamb. The birth of the counterpart of the returning Lord was to happen 400 years 
After Calvin's uh, work for the Reformation around 1543, God's only begotten daughter was born in 1943. God's providence is profound and mysterious. Korean Christianity and Korea itself right after World War II at the beginning of the Cold War was divided between the North and the South. It was a division between communism and democracy. But in South Korea, the democracy was still in a, in a stage of development, an early stage. North Korea, however, was fully ready, preparing to invade the South. Korea was liberated in 1945, and the Korean War broke out in 1950. Yet there is evidence that heaven was guiding things. And so the and so the Korean War was a war where God was present, a holy war. After that, in 1960, True Parents' Advent took place. Many countries that had been under colonial rule, particularly those in Africa, became independent and were liberated. The realization of humanity's wish and heavenly parents' hope and dream became possible through the emergence of the true parents on earth. And under the same true parents, all of humankind became brothers and sisters, and so there can no longer be countries that rule over others. Even so, for God's providence. The Christian foundation should have worked with true parents. However, this didn't work out, and so true parents' course for the past 60 years has been like walking in the wilderness. And yet, as we are the parents, we did our best. And so today, around the world, we have raised many blessed families through the marriage blessing. Humankind can return to God our Creator only through the true parents. In other words, through true parents, people need to be born again. This is what I wish to say. That is, through the process of the marriage blessing, under God, our Creator, 
God is the heavenly parent of humankind. And the way to become the children of heavenly parent has been paved and widened by true parents for the past 60 years. And yet, still, the 7.8 billion people of the world still do not know about these parents for whose coming heavenly parent had longed and for whom all humankind need and whom all humankind need to meet and discover then who is to let all people know about true parents and lead everyone to become heavenly parents children this should be you in particular religious leaders in america and throughout the world with one united heart and embracing and guiding all people this is the responsibility god has given you The fulfillment of that responsibility will create a new history. As I previously mentioned, new wine should be put into new wineskins. Only when we let go of everything in the past that had a human-centered beginning and advance to a position that is centered solely on true parents and on the heavenly parent, can God be with us? This is what I want to say. I would also like to say that God has been waiting with such an urgent heart. We have come to know about this, notably everything that happened this year is a warning from God that there is no more time. In particular, as America celebrates its 400 years of history, must regain its original founding spirit. our heavenly parent can no longer dwell in the United States of America. This is not good. This must not happen. God blessed the United States and made it a powerful nation in front of the world for the purpose of embracing all of its 7.8 billion people. Heavens and true parents hard work must no longer be allowed to be in vain.
right after World War II. The victory of the United States brought tremendous hope to the free world. The United States must uphold God, uphold heaven, yet it has forgotten God. and acted with pride, and so many problems have arisen. Family breakdown, sexual pros promiscuity among the young, substance abuse and other such issues have troubled the United States. At the time of the Roman Empire, these whose roads crisscrossed the world, these were the very signs that the empire was going to collapse. Observing these things, we as the true parents went to the United States and for 40 years we invested in that country over and over again. We clung to God, who was at the point of leaving America. And implored him to give that nation another chance, this nation another chance to fulfill its responsibility. In those days, as we walked the streets of Manhattan, our tears did not stop falling. At that time, a lot of young people in the United States, even hippies, followed true parents. And a new history began to be written. These followers matured in their love. And in 1975, many went out as missionaries to the world. Among these, many are still in their mission countries. Continuing to take responsibility for those missions and nations. As people who deeply understand Heavenly Parents' heart and understand true parents, until this day, with the resolve to become sons and daughters who fulfill heavenly parents' dream until their very last breath, they continue to labor. And so the United States of America today, which God has blessed, must through accomplishing its responsibility and bearing results, be able to write a new history. I would like to say the following. Please forgive the American polit politicians and work together in oneness. Harmony and unity is the only way by which the United States can maintain its existence. You must know this. For the United States, the nation God has blessed, to stand in a position wherein it can fulfill its responsibility before God is what God has been wishing for and waiting for. And so, 
To all the pastors, members of the clergy in America and throughout the world, there are many religions in our world today. And all these faiths have one purpose. They all share the same will, have the same purpose to serve and attend the absolute being, our creator. Hence, I sincerely hope that you will let all people know about our creator and work to realize a world of peace wherein all people live in unity as one family of humankind, one great family under our heavenly parent. Please raise your voices and work together for this. I give you my blessing. inspiring words and the heart of a true mother of peace for all humankind. We love you.